Will you try any? No, that is not what we're doing. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have another super special fun collab for you. Uh, I know I had a collab last week, so we're like collab on collab on collab, but I've been meeting more and more other vintage YouTubers, and so it gives me lots of opportunities to try new things. So sometime in the summer, Drew messaged me, and she was like, let's like make a 40s Friendsgiving theme. So making a Thanksgiving dish and then doing something else that is vaguely 40s themed. So that's what we're doing here. You will see all the other creators linked down below. Some are YouTubers, some are Instagrams, but I believe there's eight of us. So go and find all these new fun YouTubers to follow. They're all really, really fabulous creators. So for my 40s Thanksgiving, like I said, I think I'm cheating. So I'm using a 50s recipe because we actually cook it in my family every single year for Thanksgiving. Uh, and cook is like rough. It's a dessert recipe for a jello salad. I didn't realize that like jello salads were super frowned upon because I always grew up eating them. So I'm gonna make that. I'm excited because I'm gonna have some friends try it on camera for funsies. I am also going to be sewing a garment. I think this is a 50s pattern. I can't find a date on it. Um, it's a little bit poofy for the 40s. So this would be a really, really late 40s or really early 50s patterns. It's just, it worked for what I wanted to do. In this video, I wanted to highlight upcycling. So I got these really lovely pillowcase sets a while ago and I really wanted to make a garment out of these. Basically, my plan is to take this pattern and I'm gonna make the sleeves out of the quilted bit, which I think will be really, really pretty. And I've seen a lot of like remade quilt tops into garments that I really love. Um, and I really love these colors and I think these stripes will make for such a fun and quirky sleeve. Um, and then the bodice I'm going to make out of this plain blue fabric. Uh, I used this fabric a really long time ago in a 1940s dress making video that I will put up and the eye, whichever side it appears, I never remember. I think it's this side. Uh, famous last words though. Uh, so I use this fabric. I really like this fabric. I really like this color. I think it melds well with the quilt top. So that is what we will be doing in today's video. First, I'm gonna start by cutting and making the garment and then we'll jump into the making of peachy jello salad. Uh, such a high, high level skill. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll have my friends try the salad and then I'll reveal the garment. Um, but yes, I'm excited to see how everybody else orders their video because while going to the drawing board and trying to like figure out what I'm doing for this video, I felt kind of stumped on how to weave everything together. So definitely stay tuned and see what all these other creators do to weave everything together. I think it'll be super neat and super fun. And let's now jump into me cutting out my pattern. All right, here I am. I am picking apart this pillowcase. First, I'm just getting the top stitching that's up around the edging. This is like not... I mean, it's kind of quilted, but also not kind of quilted. Um, in the background, we have a lurking spooky, um, always watching, always there, because she's creepy like that. And then after I get the top stitching all picked off, I went ahead and I turned it inside out, and I picked off the stitches that were attaching the like backing of the pillowcase to the front of the pillowcase, and then ripping those apart. Ripping these are always really, really, really satisfying, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And then no French seams here, so the cutting out of this is pretty normal and straightforward. First, I am cutting out the sleeves, and only the sleeves, in the quilted pieces. Uh, there's just enough room on these, barely, uh, so very excited about that. This pattern seemed to be the right choice for these. So I am lining up that line that tells you where to put it on the cross grain. Uh, I am lining that up with like the lines of the actual quilts. Uh, and hoping that's like close enough. And then as always, I have a very mischievous cat getting in my way. And then I am moving on and I am cutting the blouse bodice uh, out of the blue fabric. I'm making sure to mark them because the sides look the same. And then I am using my marking tools and all that jazz to get everything marked and ready to go. From there, I am going to the sewing machine and here I am sewing the sleeve like sides together and then I am also sewing together all the facings as well as all of the darts and tucks and anything like that that's included in this pattern. Most patterns recommend you assemble things by the unit but I like to assemble all the units at once because I hate the inefficiency of uh, assembling them separately so on a project as easy as this one I am not doing that. Here I am just pressing all the things uh, being the darts particularly. Uh, dart pressing is always a really important step in the sewing project and it's also really satisfying for me at least. And then here I am top stitching the edges of the facing down 
And then I am also stitching all of the bodice pieces together, so just the front and the back pieces. From here, I have pinned all of the facing in the blouse, and I am just sewing the facing to the blouse, and then I am clipping all of the curves, and then I am understitching the curved facing pieces. This is really important if you want your facings to lay flat. And here you have me pressing the facing. I always find pressing the facing really, really, really satisfying because it like starts to really give the garment like that finished look. Then off camera, I will be tacking down the facing using slip stitch by hand. Uh, I prefer to do hand sewn details because I think it always looks nicer. And then here I am using my narrow hemming foot to go ahead and get a hem at the bottom of this shirt. Um, I like this narrow he hemming foot, but I'm really poor at like starting it. So it always takes me a while to get it going on like a pace that I like, but I love the finish it gives. Uh, it's always really, really nice. So it's worth kind of the finickiness. And then now I am putting in the buttonholes using my buttonhole foot. Uh, my buttonhole foot comes with a steel plate that you can put the fabric on and I always think it yields a better finished button. Um, I'm so glad I have gotten over my fear of this foot and now can use it to really speed up my times on making things. Now we are moving on to the sleeve and I am working on getting that elastic channel. The reason I'm doing this later is because I need to change thread color and so I just wanted the bodice done so I could change thread color. Because obviously I want this to be a cream since it will be seen on the outside and be kind of top stitched. So I am measuring the channel to be a half inch around. After ironing that, I am top stitching it down. And then now that the channel is made, I'm going ahead and attaching the sleeves onto the bodice, which is really exciting. We're super close to being done. One of the last things to do is to feed the elastic through the channel. So here I am just measuring my arm. That is some terrible lipstick though, ignore that, goodness. After I have that measured, I am now using a safety pin to feed this elastic around the channel. Um, this was actually kind of frustrating because anyone who has used this method knows that around seams, the channel can get finicky and kind of hard to push your pin through. And on this, because it was quilted pieces, there were certain points where the channel was difficult and there was like a new strip almost every two inches. So it got really, really frustrating really, really fast, but I made it through it. And then here what I am doing is I am using a zigzag stitch uh, back and forth a bunch of times really tightly to put the elastic together. Um, at the ends, I use the zigzag stitch so it has some stretch to it and is less likely to break. Um, and if you do them a long while, you're in great shape and they will lay nice and flat within the channel. All right, I think we're good and we're recording and we're good to go. So. Uh, here I have all of my ingredients for peachy jello salad except for the cool whip that will come later. I have peach jello, I have vanilla pudding, and then I have canned peaches. So the instructions say to first make the pudding as directed but instead of milk to use water and peach juice. Uh, I know really enticing. So I'm gonna attempt to open this can. I'm a terrible can opener so we'll see. Ugh, see we're already off to a bad start. Okay we're going. Uh, so uh, I decided to attempt to style my hair semi 40s today. I was just gonna do normal victory rolls but I couldn't get them to work so we ended up with four weird little small victory rolls. I don't know what's going on there. Ugh, come on, you can do it. I would really love an electric can opener, except for I don't want to use the counter space for it. Cause I will say I really hate opening cans. And now it's opening the wrong way. Okay, so it says basically to use the peach juice. Uh, and this calls for, the pudding calls for three cups of liquid. No, 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 no. Uh, this is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but here we are. I'm gonna try to get all the liquid I can out of this. All right, so I'm gonna just cover this can and put it in the fridge. Uh, this yielded me about a cup of peach juice. So now we just need water, um, which I'm getting over here. So this is two cups. As far as vintage Jello recipes go, this one is like least weird, but it still seems really weird to make a pudding mix 
without milk, but it's what it says to do, so it's what we'll do. I already feel sticky from this process. Uh, this Obviously, this recipe has quite a bit of sugar in it, which I love sugar. I'm a huge sweet tooth, so I'm fine with, but it is blending. Uh, I would like to get all chunks out. I think I'm supposed to do that. Okay, we're gonna leave it as is, and we're gonna take it over to the stove now. All right, we have turned on the stove and I guess we're gonna keep mixing. After it's been boiling for three minutes, I'm going ahead and taking the peach jello packet and I am dissolving that into the pudding and I am just stirring until dissolved and making a big old mess. Uh, with the way I poured the package in. And then after you have it dissolved, you are covering it and then you are putting it in the fridge to set overnight. The next morning, you pull it out of the fridge, uh, check that it's set, and then after that, you start to go ahead and get your peaches all chopped into bite-sized pieces. You be the judge of what bite-sized pieces mean to you. For me, it meant about like four to five pieces per peach. And then once your peaches are chopped, go ahead and throw those into a large mixing bowl. In the mixing bowl, go ahead and add your jello um, and then like kind of like mush it up with the peaches and get those stirred together really well. The recipe does not say to do this, but instinctually I decided it was the right thing to do because if you can get the peaches and the jello mixed together better, it will make it so you don't have to stir the cool whip as much. So hopefully you will end up not flattening the cool whip. And then you are adding in the cool whip and folding it in gently and just trying to get things stirred to a consistent consistency um, where you have kind of an even like amount of peach chunks and jello chunks and cool whip after that i am going ahead and i am putting this into the bowl i will be serving it in uh, which is this really cute heart dish that i found on mercari uh, super happy about it i spent so much time looking for the perfect peachy jello bowl after putting it in my serving dish i'm going to go ahead and cover it I only have tin foil. Usually I would use something like plastic wrap for this, but tin foil is what I have. And then you are putting that in the fridge. The recipe recommends you set it for about an hour before serving. Are you filming now? Yeah, it's... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are filming. <laughs> so this is my uh, family recipe of peach jello salad. Uh, we're Fine. testing to see if it's nostalgia that makes me like it or if it's actually good. <laughs> Um, or if I'm trash, which is totally fine. <laughs> we already know that, though. We do know. Um, this is Katie. This is Jess. They're great. They give spooky medication when I'm unavailable, and it's wonderful. So it's all we do in our true friends. They, <laughs> they they give they give spooky medication and they eat my weird concoctions. So what what else could you ask for? And our cats might make an appearance. Maybe we'll see. They have two of them, so they have eight legs. How much do you want? Uh, we'll see if I like it. <laughs> I know I like it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have the tiny glass. It's perfect. It smells like it looks. Does it? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> like, uh, it's good. very fruity. Like a can can of peaches. No, it's of aspartame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. You like it? Yeah. It's very you know sugary. The, the peach flavor reminds me of like, you know when you get those bubble waters from like the cheap bubble waters that come in like the liter bottles that mm -hmm. aren't like, they're not like LaCroix, they're the like fake sugar ones and you can get like peaches and cream bubble water. Mm. Like this is what this tastes like. Mm. But I like peaches and cream bubble water. See, I don't think I'd like this in bubble water form. I think I want it in... Cool in eating form and like weird pudding jello <laughs> actually i really like this, this is good. i think if, if you i just only got a bite of cream mm. and it was super sweet so mm -hmm. the fruit makes it a better texture and flavor <laughs> <laughs> you don't just enjoy the texture of cool <laughs> I it's definitely the think the canned peaches also improve the texture. Like my first oh, yeah. bite was just the gel and the cool whip, so I was like, this is like a like bubble water. And then I had the peach and was like, oh, this is actually good. Oh good. Yeah, no, I think the like kind of crunchiness of the peach is highly necessary. Like <laughs> adding some lemon might be good. You know, a little bit of oh, acid in uh, there. We could we could do the Christmas edition of this at some point. It has, I know. it's cranberry, uh, mm. it, you do like whole cranberries in it, and then instead of peach jello, you do a raspberry jello. 
Mm. So it's a little bit less sweet because the cranberries bite a little bit more. I also think something to make this bite a little more, oddly enough, would be cherries. Like a cherry on top. Like maraschino cherry? <laughs> or like a nicer cherry. Like a maraschino <laughs> like, cherry. You don't like, put nice cherries in peachy jello salad. I know, but like a cherry that's just a little harder than a mar- like a normal maraschino. Mia! Would you eat it? Okay, is it actually good? She or says it no. not cat approved. Mia! <laughs> oh, that was rude. But now we don't know if she approves it. She was not interested. She was leaning Sorry. far away. Okay, well, let's see now. Now that she's tried some, does she want more? <laughs> no, no. Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> I will go for some more. I like it. No, I like it. Um, well, that's good because uh, otherwise I have to eat all of it by myself. I'm bring it to my party. Well, I was debating bringing it to your party. I guess we'll see how much is left. But you didn't want to be publicly shamed if it wasn't good. <laughs> no, no, it's more that like, I don't know. It's just like, it's kind, it's kind of a weird thing mm-hmm. to bring to like mm-hmm. a casual mm-hmm. friend Halloween party. Okay, after getting seconds, I'm like, I think there's only so much Cool Whip I can eat. Mm-hmm. Like, hmm. I think I need to like stop before I start not liking it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would this be good with like heavy whipping cream? Like, could you eat more of it? Versus Cool Whip? Yeah. It would be less sweet. Yeah. Mm hmm. Cheers! <laughs> Yum! <laughs> uh, so, human approved, uh, cat disapproved, which is really <laughs> deeply disappointing. Uh, I am not saying I won't go home and make Spooky try it as well to see if it's truly cat disapproved, but. That's it. We tried it, and they didn't hate it, so it's not just nostalgia. I win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are going to see if we can get P- Spooky to try this peachy jello salad. Mm, she looks intrigued. Over here. How does that? Do you like it? Do you want any? Mm, that looks like a suspicious cat. Will you try any? No, that is not what we're doing. No. Oh, spooky. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Do you want to try any? Oh, when she doesn't know what something is, she hits it with her paw like a bunch of times to try to like make it better. But now her paw is sticky. Stop it. Okay. She has it on both paws. She's spraying it everywhere. We've made a mess. Uh, so uh, not spooky approved. She's afraid of it. Um, she says, this is very, very scary, mom. I'm not sure about this. Hmm. Yeah, she's scared of it. She does not like this. She hits it all away. Uh, so yes, definitely not cat approved. Very human approved. I brought it to the Halloween party. People really liked it. They wanted it to be a dip though. Stop it, Spooky. <laughs> they wanted it to be a dip uh, and it's not a dip. So however, everybody stated they enjoyed it. But yes, this is very not cat approved. Spooky is frightened. Mia hated it. Uh, we also made Vincent, their other cat, try it. Vincent didn't like it either. Uh, Well, we didn't make him try it. He was not interested. Oh, are you coming for more? Are you coming to do more battle with the peachy jello salad? Uh, My favorite has been recently is sometimes she'll... Are you going to hit it again? Yeah, okay. Well, that's not really working out well for you. Yeah? Does that feel weird? Yeah? Does that feel weird? But yeah, this is what she does. She like lightly taps it with her paw when she's like uncertain about something. So um, needless to say, peachy jello is not a winner and now I have sticky cat paws all over my table. So with that, let's go ahead and go over to the reveal. We are. We're in wrap-up mode. Um, I did not bring my little peachy jello here for wrap-up because that felt kind of silly. As you saw, my peachy jello was a resounding success. Definitely, like, it's better with food than, like, as a standalone piece. Like, it's better to have it as something on your plate because otherwise it left leaves, like, leaves, like, weird nonsense on your teeth. I do really love this blouse I made. It's actually pretty wild that each of these sleeves is a whole pillowcase's worth of fabric. 
because they're they're poofy, but like they're not that poofy. Uh, so it really takes a lot of fabric to make really poofy sleeves. I think this is super cute. Uh, I really like it for my first experimentation and venturing into kind of some of this more creative upcycling using linens. I really like the way the stripes go down the arm. I like they kind of look like little stripey quilty mushrooms. I don't know. Um, and then I also really like, uh, I've been loving having the different colored buttons on pieces with different colors. Like, I just think it's like kind of fun and quirky. So I did that on a swimsuit I made a while ago as well. I'll link that in the eye. That pretty much sums up this project. Since I made this blouse before, I didn't learn a whole lot. Um, and it was pretty easy breezy. That was exciting for me because, uh, I've had kind of some pretty intense sewing projects lately, but definitely be sure to check out everybody else's video or Instagram posts who's participating in this. They're gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. We've been like chatting it up in Instagram, talking about like what recipes we're making or what type of projects we're doing. Some people will be doing garments and some will be doing other things since not everyone's a sewer and we wanted to make sure everything was inc as inclusive as possible. So definitely check out all the people who are participating down below. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely hit that subscribe button and stick around if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye! Oh my goodness and I guess startling my cat. Hello! That's not even what we're doing here. Okay, we did it. She literally just decided to scratch the chair right here as I sat on it. No, what? Now she's going for the other side. Get out of here. Please don't call the ASPCA on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I should, we should also, I should, we should say bye and then I should stop the camera. <laughs>